just when you think there couldn't possibly be any more scriptures to prove the pre-trib rapture, because there's so many hundreds of them, another one pops up. Uh, one of the one of you out there in the comments put this, and I uh, thought it was really, really good. Um, Christians are told to stand. We're going to look at the references, not all of them, but we're going to look at the best ones. Uh, people in the time of Jacob's trouble are not told to stand. Let's check this out. Romans chapter 5, verse 2. We're just going to go through these verses real quickly here. Interesting little word study on the word, on the command to stand as Christians. Romans 5, verse 2 is the first one. It says here, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. All right, go over to Romans 14, verse 4. That's your next one. Romans 14, verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. All right. Jump down to verse 10 of the same chapter. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, written to Christians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. All right, another good one. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. You see it again there. Very important one there. Jump to uh, chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Stand, like a soldier, standing there, you know. You see these soldiers outside of Buckham, Buckingham Palace there, and in the, over there in the UK, and they're, and they're standing there, the guys with the big black you know, furry hat on the red shirt or the red coat and things and they stand there. Picture of a, that's what Christians are supposed to do. When it comes to compromising God's truth, you don't back down one inch, you stand. That's what you do. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but ye, but are helpers of your, your joy, for by faith ye stand. Okay, there's the next one. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Go to Galatians chapter 5. We'll see the next reference to stand. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand, I see it again, fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand. Go next to Ephesians chapter 6. These are probably the best known ones commands to stand as a Christian. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, we'll read down through verse 14. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So, three different places there. Stand, stand, stand. We're supposed to stand. We are fighting a spiritual battle in which we must stand. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. We are to stand together. So it isn't just you solo standing out there. You standing for the word of God and for the proper doctrine and teaching and things that Bible-believing Christians believe in. Your stand is also, you're standing with other Christians that are all over the world. And we are to be united and stand together. Right? Uh, there's very little... When you actually read the Bible, you can go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. When you actually read the Bible, you'll see there's not a whole lot of leeway that we have of 
area to agree to disagree. All right. A lot of these people, oh, we'll just have to agree to disagree. It's not major doctrine. Uh, well, uh, there's a lot of times that, yes, it is. And the rapture issue is major, major doctrine. I've talked about that many, many times. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. All right, you see it there again. Philippians chapter... Oh, I'm sorry, we did go to 4, verse 1. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Stand. Again, you see it there. Next go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 8. For now we live, if ye stand fast in the Lord. All right. Again, you know, uh, we are supposed to all stand fast. And if Christians start to get cowardly and back down, it's going to make problems for other Christians. We should, you know, stand fast. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two, verse fifteen. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Stand fast. Again, you see it there. It's a command given to Christians. You say, well, I don't see the significance. How's this prove a pre-trib rapture? Go to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, verse 17. It says here, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? All right. So again, Another thing that shows, how could a Christian, when we're told to stand, 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 all those references there that we went over, okay, the Lord's telling us to stand, but then the verse here says, who shall be able to stand? Hmm. It's kind of interesting. You know, and I know you could make it, well, you know, it's talking about lost people there that are there, and it's the second coming, you know, when Jesus comes back and things, which Revelation chapter 6 is a synopsis of the whole time of Jacob's trouble, by the way. Um, but, you know, you could say, well, it's just the lost there. It's a reference to the lost. Uh, but, yeah, but if you understand the whole time of Jacob's trouble, you'll understand that it's God's judgment, God's wrath that's being poured out the whole way through it. You know, and again, how are we as Christians supposed to go into that time period? You know, doesn't work. All right, we're supposed to stand. This scripture here says in that time, who shall be able to stand? So, as I've said, the, the post-trib system, it makes God into a liar. You know, did that video about uh, Titus chapter 1 there where it talks about God cannot lie. You know, and that's the truth. But if you're a post-tribber, there are three places where you can make God into a liar. Okay? Number one, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 that we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption, right? But yet Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11, talks about if any man takes the mark, he goes to hell and gets God's wrath, all right? Doesn't work too good. And you say, well, a Christian wouldn't take the mark. Okay, then you violate 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. If any provide not for his own, especially for they of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. I have to provide for my wife and son. And if you're a man out there, a Christian man, you have to provide for your family. But how can you do that if you, no man can buy or sell unless you have the mark? You see? So that's the first time that the post-trib system makes God into a liar. What's the second time? The second time is, all throughout the Pauline epistles, it begins and ends with peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace, peace, peace. Christians are supposed to have peace that passeth understanding. We have peace from God. And yet, Revelation chapter 6, uh, let's see where the verse is here. Verse 4 says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. You say, well, that's just explaining what happens there. You know, it's kind of a forecasting. Uh, no, because verse 1 in chapter 6, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Jesus Christ is the one that opens the seal. So we're supposed to have peace as Christians, 
but Jesus, you know, from Jesus Christ, according to Paul and the Pauline epistles, but yet here Jesus opens a seal and peace is taken from the earth. How does that work? You see? So you have the mark of the beast thing taking away eternal security. You have where post tribbers make God a liar. God could be made into a liar at that point. Number two, you have the contradiction there that's created. Paul says we're supposed to have peace from Jesus, and yet Revelation chapter 6 says Jesus takes peace from the earth when he opens the second seal. So again, if Christians go into this time period, God's a liar again. Hmm. And the third one that we just did in this little study here, Christians are told to stand. We're given a command to stand. And yet, verse 17 of chapter 6 says, Who shall be able to stand? So there's three times, if you're a post-tribber, God not only can, but would lie if Christians go through that time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. I remember reading in my Bible about someone who is called the father of lies. He is a liar and the father of it. I don't remember who that would be. Hmm. It's the devil, if you don't understand my sarcasm there. The devil wants to make God into a liar. And if you are a post-tribber, post-trib, pre-wrath, the whole way through the whole thing, whatever system you are, if you believe that the body of Christ goes through that time period, you're trying to make God into a liar, whether consciously or unconsciously. The fact of the matter is, God's a liar, or God could be a liar in your system. That's why I believe what the Bible, the King James Bible teaches. The body of Christ is leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. A pre-trib rapture, not too far off now. Better get ready for it.